Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Rachel Phillips Buck, Vice President for Student Success First Resources. I'm joined by Anthony Melcury. I don't know, how do you like, what is the title that you want to be introduced with? Anthony Melcury. Just, just you. You need oh, no, no title. I, I say hotel executive. Hotel executive. Um, it is always a pleasure to spend time with Anthony. We always learn a lot. Uh, good to see all of you joining us. I have a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, um, we love to answer your questions, so please use um, the question and answer below, and I will weave those in as they fit in with our topic. Also remember, we're gonna be recording this so you can come back and look at it and also give it to people, um, your colleagues who you feel like it would be helpful. Today we're gonna be talking about anticipating student, uh, students' needs. And so I want to um, jump into kind of our roadmap and talk about some, some specific elements. But I, Anthony, I have uh, another thing that you and I have in common. What is it, our hair? No, I don't think that one works. What is it? <laughs> well. Oh my God. You used to work in a bakery. You know what, you always surprised me. So did I. <laughs> you one, of my, one of my very first jobs was working in a bakery. Really? Yes. Well, this was this was more this was a bakery, but it was also more like a catering hall, like deli. Like we did everything, and oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I and, that, and that actually sh that job actually taught me everything. But go ahead, I didn't. Really yeah, know. no. So my question about that was because so when I worked in a bakery, it was mostly sweets. They had a rule that you could eat anything that you wanted. It was like a little family family run basis. So they're like, hey, you guys can have snacks. I don't love sweets, so I didn't care. Did you in your bakery make bagels? No, we made much of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would have been in trouble there. Like I was okay to not eat cakes and stuff, but like I, I'm savory. Yeah, I. It was, more of like a, it was more of a specialty Italian specialty store, and but I will tell you something. I always been I've always been a hard worker. I was delivering papers, working Dunkin' Donuts. So the time I got there, I've already had several jobs, and I always worked hard. And then I went to Bassett's in Brooklyn, New York. That's still there and still very successful. And I understood work ethic. I understood coming in at six o'clock in the morning and being there five minutes early because six o'clock would be late because that, you know, on time is late. And like asking like by 730, maybe we stop for bagels. We actually order bagels and have a cup of coffee and then work until seven, eight o'clock at night. Yeah. And maybe you had 20 minutes in the back for, for lunch. And it wasn't like, hey, good job, guys. Good job. It was like expected. Right. Like, right. Like, so I learned there that understand where you are. And then once you understand where you are, accept it or don't yeah. accept it. Yeah. And, and right. through sheer will, I accepted it. But it, I remember when the gentleman gave me, Pat, uh, his wife his wife just passed away, a good friend of mine. We're still friends all these years. And I tell him all the time, I said, dude, you taught me work ethic. And, and I remember him handing me an envelope full of cash during the holidays. And during the holidays, we, we didn't see our families. We worked 18 hours a day, six days, seven days a week. It was crazy. And we would yeah. shut down the holiday just, just enough to have dinner. So um, he handed me the envelope and he said, you really deserve this. And I was so tired and so kind of angry, I guess, that I was like, damn right I deserve it. <laughs> it's not like, oh, thank you so much. It was like, you know, I, I earned five it. of those envelopes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's really funny because I always say when I worked at the bakery, I got bakery muscles because it is hard work i mean you the are string, lifting and, a string yeah super hard work so i have a great appreciation for people who worked in the bakery it is it's very yeah. hard work. So, so yeah bassett's really and i talk about a lot in my keynotes that bassett's taught me hard work and, and there was an owner one of the owners russell i we used to say he was built in the basement he wasn't born he was built in the basement and because he would just outwork everyone. To this day, he outworks everyone. And yeah. I always became a partner. And I said, you know, what is it going to require? And he goes, well, you got to come to work. I was like, dude, I'll put money in, but I can come to work. And he goes, why? <laughs> he goes, you work hard. I go, dude, I've never worked that hard since the day I left. <laughs> yeah. It is very, very hard work. Well, I'm glad to know that we have that in common. That's what we do. Um, okay, so let me talk about our roadmap. I want to do State of the Union like we do every time, what's happening with schools. I want to talk about um, our, our main topic today is why it's important to anticipate what students are going to need. And then I want to talk about how little problems last fall when everything was normal are going to morph into big problems this fall when everything is not normal. Um, and then talk some about solutions and strategies. So let's start with State of the Union. The first time 
you and I spent time together, this is what schools were planning on doing. Um, they were, I think, 65% planning to return in person for the fall. And I'm really curious to know from all of our attendees what your school is planning on doing. So please um, uh, respond to our poll on that. The next time we met together, um, it was July 7th and 60%. So we lost 4% moving to an online or hybrid model. And then this time, as of today, we see a pretty big change where we have 49% still planning for in-person, 35% hybrid, and 13% online, including Harvard. So um, I, I actually think that this is going to continue to get smaller and smaller, the number of students who are planning for in-person. Um, so I'm really curious to see kind of where our schools are falling. It looks like 30% um, of our attendees are planning for an in-person start, 30% hybrid. 20% um, are still considering a range of things, and then 20% are um, planning for online. So our schools tend to be kind of smaller schools. It's more important for them to open, but also as we're getting closer and closer to trying to figure out how to make that happen, it's, it's been pretty uh, difficult, I would say. Um, I have one other thing that I want to show you. So the, the nice thing about this webinar is that I've collected, I think, five different tools to talk to our schools about. And so this one is actually inspired by the hospitality industry. I'm going to show you. Look at this fun tool that I got delivered to my office today. Do you know what this is? That is a temperature uh it is. It is a, so let me show you. I'm worried it's going to say I have a fever because I'm in front of all these lights, but I'm not, I'm not sick. So let me just show Wind, you. The Wynn Hotel has that. Does it? Yep. Isn't that so helpful? So it says normal temperature and then it says you have to put on a mask. So hotels are using these. Please. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I'll give you an example. When we went to Vegas, to, uh, when my partner did, I couldn't make it. When Vegas opened a month or so ago, uh, he went to seven hotels. The Wynn Hotel had that machine behind a, um, actually maybe even a more advanced machine than that, because you didn't yeah. even have to be in front of it, so it was even more advanced. So they were in the corner behind a plant with a guy in a really nice suit, and everybody that walked into the lobby, basically their temperature was taken. Wow. And, and basically, if your temperature was high, someone would just go over to you and say, oh, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? So yeah, absolutely, and I think that that's the level of thought that has to go into it, whether it be like you can do a controlled environment like a school where every person can go in front of it and you only need seven or eight. But in the lobby, you need you need something that's gonna take everyone at once because no one's gonna queue. And then the hotels that did queue, yeah. like there was other hotels that would take temperature. So now you have to stand in line, take a temperature, then stand in line and wash your hands. And most hotels did that. And then there's one hotel, I won't, I won't name it, Cosmopolitan, they didn't do anything. They didn't really? do anything. No, it looked like it was like, um, you know, it was spring break, uh, you know, 2018. Oh, wow. And, wow. And, they're, and they're feeling the pain because they're getting really bad press about it. Yeah. Well, I like this tool because it, first of all, so the DOD has a short list of approved thermal scanners. This is on it. So I don't know all the criteria, but it's like serious business. This one for schools, if you, if it scans you and you either don't have a mask or you have a high temperature, it can email your residence director or human resources or whatever so that you can go in and say, hey, Rachel, we need to talk to you exactly as you said. Um, and then also you can rewind the video to see like contract or contact tracing. So Rachel came in, she had a fever and these five people came in before or after her. So I think for schools, it's a super helpful tool. You also, I don't know if, I don't know why they would do this in a hotel, but this one you can take your temperature and then it can print out a little badge for you mm -hmm. so that a faculty member in a class would be able to look and see like everybody has been scanned for this class we're all in good shape so right. and I love it, that it, in the front in the hotels it's like a little sticker so so they put a little sticker on and then that's your color of the day so one of the things that we do in hotels is we basically we try one of the things i talk about all day long is we have to do visual cues and one of the things we do is in our social media or in our uh, little paper that we have people read at the front desk is we say um, all of our today, all of our employees will be wearing red stickers. And the reason being, just so you know, they've been sanitized for your protection. Yeah, I love <laughs> they're, they're, that. They've been, they've been clean. They, they're, they're, they're good. We, 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 we've uh, taken care of them. Yeah. So you said something in the beginning, and I'm, I'm going to kind of, you know, I hesitate to say it, but I have to say it because, you know, you know me, right? 
Um, you said that last year it was important that it was that we really planned and it was really important as planners and a lot of administrators they're planners mm -hmm. uh, that we get it right and one of the things a lot of the stuff that we do that we can say like doctors you know don't say it, you know it's not a matter of life and death because doctors it's a matter of life and death what we're planning for i hate to say it it's a matter of life and death so yeah. this isn't about planning to hope that this kid goes on to become a doctor or gets a PhD. We're planning to just think about this. We went from hoping that we can educate our children to now hoping that they just don't get sick going to school. Yeah. So our responsibility, and I've always taken that responsibility seriously in hotel. That's why I didn't get a lot of sleep running hotels because at three o'clock in the morning, I worried about the fire alarm. I worried about everything. Right. And so, so in my business, it was life and death. So I think like like the planning is not shouldn't be associated with oh that guy is more intense than that guy it's like or that girl or whatever it's like it is it is we are talking about very serious consequences and if you decide to bring people on campus and apparently harvard didn't feel that they had the bandwidth to do it yeah that's right so it's a really good question actually i would like to know um i have another poll, poll for our attendees and that is how many of you have a safe to open plan and it has been communicated to you. Because I will tell you that a lot of schools that I'm talking to, the, the people I'm talking to, student life, academics, they're like, I mean, we have a committee and we have somebody who's making some plan, but they have no idea what it is. They don't have the details. They don't understand the logistics about how that's gonna work. And to your point, we're in big trouble if the people who have to execute it, and for some of our schools, we're talking about in three weeks, they're opening. Um, so if you have not kind of understood what your plan is or that's been communicated to you, we're, we have a very, very big problem. It's funny you said that because I have three kids going to school this, this semester. And for the first time, all three kids are going to school, two seniors, one freshman. And I don't know the plan. And matter of fact, as you were saying that, I, I was going to look down at my phone, but I didn't want to be rude uh, because I think I have a, there's a planning session for the parents and the students tonight. So I want to make sure it's nice. So as you're talking, I'm just going to answer my wife. So I don't forget. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. Let me tell you what the, um, what the plan is for most of our schools. So it looks like 58% of our schools do have a plan for safe open that has been communicated to them. And then 42% of them either do not have a plan or do have a plan, but it has not been communicated to them. So I think that's a place I would just say, if you're attending this webinar, you're a person who's thinking forward thinking, and so please have a voice for your students to go and say, we need to figure out what we're gonna do and how we're gonna be safe. Because um, there's a place where people are so anxious that they can't move forward to action. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have been there. We don't have time for that anymore. Like and now's the time where you gotta have a plan. And, and information reduces stress. Because if it's the information you didn't want, that's okay. Because now I make a decision that I didn't really want to make, but I made it and now I move on. Like my wife yeah, right that's now. That's exactly right. I agree. Girl, my wife's a teacher, right? She's in New York City's public school system. We're sitting on pins and needles because she doesn't want to retire. She can retire easily. Okay. She's done. She's had 30 years. She met the age requirement. She's done. She doesn't want to. She's a pre-K teacher. She wants to be there for her kids. Yeah. But she's, she doesn't know what the plan is going back to school. Well, is it going to be online and is it going to be half in school? Well, maybe that doesn't make sense to her. Maybe it does. So she doesn't want to retire and she doesn't want to be forced into retirement by, by, by um, decisions that she doesn't like, or is it all online? So she's in that situation too. And, the, and I said, babe, as you get information, these decisions will be made easy for you because you won't, there's some things you won't do. That's and then right. even if you don't want to not do them, you have to do them because you'll, you'll, your anxiety will be too high. Yeah. So I really think that that's really an important point. Okay, so I just want to reiterate, this is the thermal scanner. If you guys, uh, it's super affordable. If that's helpful for you, please look into it. If you don't have a plan or the plan hasn't been communicated to you, this is a thing to just say, hey, it's super simple to have this set up and it makes everybody feel much better to, to have this information. So we're thankful to uh, Doctor Nation for that. Okay, so Anthony, you talk about something all the time that I think for our colleges and universities is a little novel. And that is anticipating needs um, so that you can solve them. So I want to talk about the solution part in just a minute, but can you help us understand this idea of anticipating what people are going to need 
so that we can come up with those solutions. Uh, uh, well, I take it at a very basic level. We've all been out in a meeting or we've all went to dinner, we all traveled somewhere and we got to stain on our clothes, right? Whether it be shirt, whether it be tie, and we're like, oh my God, I don't have, I don't have an extra suit, I don't have an extra tie, I don't have an extra shirt in my car. Guess what? I do. <laughs> okay, because I know what's going to happen if I don't. It's going to ruin my mood. It's going to ruin my meeting. It's going to ruin my dinner. It's going to ruin, it's just going to, and would it be the end of the world? No. But why should I even have one moment of inconvenience when I can simply just have a suit and tie and shoes in my car all the time? If my car gets okay. stolen, it gets stolen, right? It's like, like what, like, so to me, and my wife always laughs about that. Like, I'm always like, I'll, I'll go to Manhattan. And they're like, why do you have three shirts in the car? I don't know. Just in case I get uncomfortable in the car and it's too tight or I get a stain, I have a shirt. Yeah. What, what's the difference? Like, am I bothering you? It's my plan. <laughs> It's my plan. It makes me feel better. And so planning makes you feel better. We all, we've all been there in our own business, in our own lives. When we plan, like right now, I'm supposed to do my P&L for my accountant a month ago. I haven't done it. And it's, it's bothering me. And it's the first time I haven't done it. Yeah. And, 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 and it's bothering me. So planning just makes you feel better so you can accomplish your, your, your job better. Well, I'm going to show you a picture of a hotel and I want to see if you recognize this because when I was thinking about anticipating people's moods or people's needs. Yeah, that's St. John's. That's Canada. That's the young lady that picked up all of the cigarette butts all over her campus and yes. she was intense. She was intense. Um, what's amazing to me is the first 15 minutes of the show, right? Where, let me just recap for those of you who have not seen this. Um, Anthony gets there. It's cold. It's raining. It's dark. It's it's nighttime, and the there's seven pages of instructions to follow. There's five parking spaces for the whole hotel. Anthony is like, I think it's a it's a code to a key box to a mailbox to a room key, to then be able to get in your room. Right. I think at the end of that that process, it was like seven pages of notes and two phone calls just to get into your room. And what made me think of this is she had the cleanest rooms. You said, this is the cleanest hallway I've ever walked down. And I don't care. I don't, so people know, I have no idea what you're going to ask me. So like, like I'm, I'm, I'm recovering from the trauma I suffered on this show. <laughs> yeah. She, she was a great example of a person who was not anticipating needs. She was just saying like, I'm going to give you seven pages and you should follow them. And you're like, I'm cold and I'm hungry and I'm tired of going through this process. And is there not a way you could have made this easier? And it's the first time I slammed my hand on a desk on a, in my lifetime, in my career. Uh, and it's like, cause she wasn't listening. And it's like, yeah. like you're killing. And you remember her whole team left. They quit. Right? Yeah, they quit. And, and, and not because of me. No, no, no. Yeah, to right. be clear, not because of you. No, but the, the point being is, and I think it's a good point, is just so you know, the show's not scripted, right? So when I get there, and, and, my, and my producers are loving this because they know they've been there and they know these issues <laughs> are there, so they cannot wait to see my right. reaction. This is, like, this, is the, this is their Christmas present, right? <laughs> so, so, and they know how buttoned up I am. So, so I can't find the parking spot. Then they have a list and they know I don't read 90% of the stuff they give me. So, so they give me this manual to read. I'm like, are you kidding me? I gotta read this manual. So I was flabbergasted. I was exhausted the time I got to my room. And they said, all of this doesn't matter. I remember the words and, and, and I put so much attention to these shows that you can show me a picture of any show. And I remember it because it's so intense because I want to, again, I want to plan. I want to do my job. And I go into the room and everything was beautiful. Everything was yeah. perfect. It was the, yeah. I, I couldn't have gotten a room this but, Good. I could not have done a better job than this woman yeah. when it comes to this hotel. Yeah. Okay. I walk in the room and I'm like, it doesn't matter because I'm upset and the employees are upset. So it doesn't matter. And those are all things that if she were an empathetic, hos hospitable person, she could have anticipated when people get here cold and it's wet and it's raining and there's no parking and they have to go through the stupid process and read 50 pages. I can't make the room clean enough for them to be happy. Right. Right. You can't, it's impossible. And, that, yeah. and that's a good point because the time you get to a school or you get to a hotel and if I'm, my anxiety is so high that I have to figure it out when I get there and all of a sudden it's perfect. It's like, I'm already pissed. 
<laughs> I, I, I talk about I talk about the insurance policy before you get to your room. It's like five thousand things on the insurance policy. Right. By the time you get to your insurance policy, if there's I think I talked about this, if there's an elephant in the room dancing, you don't care because everybody did everything right. But if everybody did everything wrong, then it's an elephant in the room dancing. It's not like entertainment. Right, exactly. It's like something I can you've told me all along something's wrong. Here's the other something wrong, right? right. So as we think about that for our students, I don't know if you guys, I mean, this is a this is a thing where students are like, you're sending us home, but you're still charging us all these fees, or I'm frustrated because you're not reducing my tuition, or we can anticipate some of these problems to come. And it's not enough just to say, oh yeah, I see that coming. It's solve the problem. How are we going to address things like this instead of getting them to the point where they're so frustrated with us, it, we can't solve it anymore. You know, you know what? It's a great point because I'm going through that right now. I just paid two of my kids tuition. Um, and not one school, because it's going to be a hybrid, told me that it's going to be the same price until I ask. And because I live in, one, I saved for, the, for college, so the money's there. And because I live in a world where I just can't allow bad stuff in my brain and yeah. I don't have time to argue with people. At the end of the day, my daughter wants to go to school. We're going to let her go to school and, and we're going to make sure it's safe. We're going to, we're going to get her, her own COVID test. You know, she's going to have, they don't know this yet, but my kids are going to have to have COVID tests at least every 10 days, whether they like yeah. it or not. And so, so, but I just said, not dealing with it. I'm paying it. That's it. It's over. It's not I a problem. I want to deal with. Yeah. I but, can't but, there's a lot, but there's a lot of people that will make it a thing. And then now what would you do? You're really taking your stressed out admin and now you're making them deal with somebody that could have been given information and could have made a decision. Yeah. But I was making a decision either way. They were going, right. I was paying. But that's not the point. The point is, you didn't tell me. And I, and, and I, I, listen, if I had three more kids behind me that, that I was going to put through school, I wouldn't put them through these schools. I love the schools, but there's no communication. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I think when we're talking about anticipating needs, one thing um, that you talk a lot about is asking, so in the hospitality business, asking clients, what is it that you need? What was your experience? What went well for you? What would you like to be different? Um, I always laugh when people say to you like, but the, the customer didn't tell me. Okay, well, it's not their job to run down all the ways that they're unhappy with you, right? right? You have to be proactive about that. So we have a lot of resources. Schools, if you guys did not do a student survey, we have a lot of um, information about what schools were saying, students were saying is hard about moving to online. Also, if you are not doing surveys for the fall, you should be. So um, we have a partner, Macmillan. This is my second tool for you, who's doing a bunch of surveys for students. They're doing one about what are you looking forward to? They're doing one about how are we doing for you in this semester? They're doing one kind of later in the semester. If you are not asking students how it's going, you cannot anticipate and solve problems. It's bad. Oh my God. I couldn't imagine, right? Like being in the school where I'm not doing it. Like just now, like we work together a little bit. And like, so I really wasn't concerned about being overly prepared for, for, for this, you know, so you, you do a great job in preparation. You send it to me. I don't read it. And um, I don't read any of it because I want to be ready. But what happened was eight minutes before I got there, eight minutes before we we're supposed to go. And what did you say? I said, you're so early. Right. Eight <laughs> minutes. And you're like, I'm early. I'm using and the reason I did that was because I wanted to make sure that I'm providing you what you need. And you just said, hey, I said it to you, you're good. And we just talked about something else. But yeah. it was really important to me to, to, I said, you know what? I got to go to this other call because I'm feeling a little insecure that maybe I don't want to say the same things I said before. And maybe she sent me things that I should have thought about. So I was feeling insecure a little bit. I said, let me make sure I'm providing her the right service. And let me make sure that I'm being a good person and being prepared. Yeah. So that, that eight minutes of my life is two hours, but, 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 but it made you feel better. It was surprised you because you didn't, but, but again, let's talk about that. You didn't anticipate that eight minutes. So you didn't need it because you were ready. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. That's exactly right. That's good. So can you talk about the little problems become big problems? I want to set this up and then I want to hear what you have to say about it. So um, you, you actually were saying this about hotels the other day that when everything is normal, if, um, somebody is not there to greet you. People are like, okay, it's not my favorite, but it's okay. If the room isn't as clean as you want it, okay. If a student can't connect with their financial aid counselor, okay, because everything's normal. Things are not normal. 
And so any gap in service that you had in the fall where we were just able to say like, I know that advisor is hard to get a hold of, or I know that faculty member is not super helpful. It's okay. Those small things last fall are going to be magnified and bigger because Nobody is in a good place and we don't have football and you don't have roommates and we can't all just go hang out in the learning commons to study. I can't go play poker in a casino. You can't, right. We've taken all of these things away and now all of a sudden our little problems are becoming bigger problems. So yeah. do you want to talk about yeah, that? And we didn't go on that vacation our family was supposed to go on and we didn't That's go to right. Disney World and we didn't go to, yeah. And, and I was talking about that just the other day. Um, I'll put it in, like, I'll, I'll look at it this way. We as human beings are, are forgiving in a lot of ways. And one of the things we do is it's a pandemic. So of course the school's overwhelmed. Okay. Of course that admin's overwhelmed. Well, you know what? The admins I've been talking to, they seem a lot less stressed. Not that they're not dealing with a lot of stuff, but they're home. And like I've spoken to two or three of them and they're like, this is, I, I, you know, I don't want a pandemic, but I'm liking it. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, like, like I, I'm, do, I'm working a little bit more. But like, like I get to go for my run. I get to eat my breakfast. Like, like it, it, I like it. Yeah. So, so again, not a lot of people do, but some people do. So just because people will forgive you because it's a pandemic and they understand the stress schools are in or the stress hotels are in and they will forgive themselves and say, you know what? It's not a big deal. I wanted to do that, but I won't do that this semester. I'll do it. Like, why are we giving ourselves more excuses? We already have excuses, right? Yeah. Like, listen. You, you, like you can't go to California because you go to California, you got to quarantine for two weeks in New York, right? right? So there's so many things. Why now with just a little preparation and a little thought and a little time off, you know, other things, you can provide something like that, that machine you just showed us, you yeah. know, you, they, they, those things are, I always say little things are the big things. So the first thing you got to think of is like, don't allow yourself to give yourself that excuse. I'll work out tomorrow. I'll eat a banana tomorrow. Today, I want an egg McMuffin. We've all been there. I'm there every day. So, yes. so you know, I, I, you know what? The, the, the provost hasn't said exactly what he's thinking, and I'm thinking this. But you know what? Let me stack this up in case he starts thinking my way, and I'm ready. It's like, right? Don't wait for me to be ready. You know, I, you know, and the, the one thing I learned in the military is, you know, I'm ready. All you got to do is take me out of the bag. Like, and I'm fully <laughs> ironed and pressed, and, and, I, and I've eaten it, and I'm, I'm ready to go. It's like, well, I wasn't expecting this. Doesn't matter. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Yeah. And that to me in a pandemic and in a situation is I'm anticipating the problems that are coming. So I'm going to solve them before they happen. Because the time I get there, there are 27 problems already. Right. Those problems are already there because I didn't think of everything. You can't think of everything, right? Right. And, and again, I use UFC because they did a great job in, in Fight Island. And, and um, there were a couple of people that tested positive. But they got it so far out, like before they go to school, before they get even on a plane. Yeah. Nobody else had COVID. When, when, they, when they were fighting, they're bleeding and spitting on each other and they're fine. So, so <laughs> if you're going to, like right now, the schools are requiring two weeks. Two weeks. Within two weeks of a COVID test. That's great. And I appreciate that. I'm getting my kids a COVID test literally two days before two. Yeah. Okay. Because my kids are going to be going out to bar back you backyard barbecues and going to the beach and again, social distancing and doing their best, but they're kids they are 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to make sure that they're healthy and I'm going to make sure that they're not, um, you know, making anyone else unhealthy. And it's just, yeah. it's just about planning. I, it's really interesting as you're saying that because it's, we are stuck in a place where, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, we have a lot of grace for ourselves. We're like, I mean, you can have an egg McMuffin because everything's a wreck and this is a, right. But we, we didn't expect that to be like the way that we live. Right. And so at some point you have to say like, okay, <laughs> we need to settle <laughs> down with the egg McMuffin. Like, we got to get back to it. Right. right like in some, in some, point, in some ways I kind of like having an egg McMuffin and, and, and like, you know, staying home all the time. And, but at some point it becomes your new normal that you don't appreciate. That's right. You don't want That's your life. So, so the most important thing is you cannot make an excuse for yourself because it's easy. Right. You know, planning takes time out of your day so it can add time in your day later. 
you know, go slow now, you can go fast later. Yeah. So, so all the planning in the world now will get you free time later. It's an investment, right? We're, we're spending money right now so that in the long run, we're going to be better Listen, off. Listen, the Wynn Hotel is doing better than expected, better than their competition. And the reason that is, is because they're high net worth people, the people that go to the Wynn Hotel, they're like, oh, it's the Wynn. Of course they got it right. It's the win. Right. Interesting. It's the win. If, if the win didn't get right, like even when, when my partner was there showing me everything, I was like, it's the win. Of course, show me something else. <laughs> like, like, it's true. So I love that because I was thinking the other day about how our schools have pretty high enrollments for the fall. So their expectation is that students are going to come back, which that's good. They also have bigger freshman classes than they've seen before. And I think it's because of brand management, right? So um, smaller schools have been super invested in, we're gonna communicate with our students. They're super important to us. We're gonna spend the whole summer working to get them back. Um, and even if you feel like your school didn't do a great job, you still have a brand. So like when I worked at a school, they did things that I didn't love, but if you ask any student that I was connected to, they'd be like, oh, Rachel, she'll solve problems for you. She'll take care of things, right? So both ways, either you have a school that's doing a great job of, like everyone would be like, of course that school's treating us that way. Of course that school's getting it right. And right. even if you don't, you have a brand, which I know that you have a lot to say about. Right, right. You know, I, I always say, you know, you don't know how good I am or bad I am until I leave because then you see the owner. I just left, like, if I don't own the hotel and I'm just a general manager, it's like, hello. Yeah. And now, now, you don't see what I was keeping you away from seeing because everything was butterfly and roses. Yeah, that's, that's my right. job. That's and right. when I step away and you got a weaker manager in there, then you really see who's riding, who's driving the bus. There's yeah. not an owner alive that ever drove the bus that I, that I, that I was driving. Now, <laughs> they can fire me and they can say they don't like something and I can think about that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's their job. They can fire me in a second. But I am going to say what I need to say to my team, my way, with my flavor, and it's going to be with the owner's blessing, even if the owner doesn't have, gave me the blessing. They're not going to know that I'm upset with the owner. So you can be upset with the school and say they're not doing that. You can feed into it, like a lot of people do. You might say the majority of people do, because <laughs> it's easy to give yourself an excuse you know, high performers in high performing schools are in high performers for action by accident. Right. Is that an accident? That's right. So that's really funny because my next slide is um, about you can either anticipate needs and complain or you can anticipate needs and solve. Right. So this idea of like, give yourself an excuse, you can anticipate and then be like, well, I mean, there's nothing to be done. I'm not in charge of that. I can't fix it. There's, you know, I don't know what you want me to do. I think we're past that now. Like, I think we're at the place with, with schools opening that we cannot anticipate and complain anymore. Like, there's no time for that. We are in a place now where we have to anticipate and solve. And you're always really good <laughs> to me. Like, I don't know what the complaint, I don't know what your excuse for why you didn't fix this is, but I'm just going to break it fully. So then you have to fix it. Right. Yeah. And like that, like I saw a little, I know where that was. Can I, would you be surprised if I know exactly where that was? No, where I don't, I actually don't that know where was, it was. That was in uh, a, a state college, Pennsylvania at a hotel and it was sticking out a little bit and, and I was bothering me a lot and I just ran over and I pulled it down and I think I may have ripped my suit when I did it. Um, but I was just like, it's bothering me because yeah. eventually that's going to wind up with somebody's head. And if it doesn't, it's going to, if you're, if you're getting a really good rate that night, it's putting in people's head before they even get to the room that this, is, this place isn't worth that rate. That's why, right? yeah. So, so it's, and at this point, it's, it's not about, you know, it'd be good to anticipate these. It's like, that's your job. Like, that's your right. job. That is what you get a paycheck for. Right. right. I get a paycheck as general manager to solve and anticipate problems. Like, I don't get a paycheck to think about maybe there's a problem. <laughs> Or make excuses for why we can't pick, fix that problem or it can't be done or we're going to have and, to. And, and, and most of the people that you said that are listening to this, those are the people that are into solving the problems because they're listening, they're here. Those are the high performers, right? But yes. you can't allow, what happens to even high performers is you can't allow people that are not high performers to get in your space. Matter of fact, we had something off camera in those eight minutes that we were laughing about that happened today. 
And I said to you, I said, I did not allow that right. to enter my show. And I wanted to really badly. <laughs> like, I had some things but, to say, but I didn't. <laughs> but it didn't serve the audience. It didn't right. serve the people watching me. It would have served me and it would have been a lot of fun <laughs> to do that. But I decided not to do it. So, so I'm solving problems. So I solved the problem by not having 27 text messages of people saying, why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's right. Um, so as we're talking about solving problems too, I have a question for you uh, that, I, that I'm going to ask you in just a second, but I want to talk about the difference between solutions and strategies, because I think this is a thing for student life that they're really struggling with. So a solution is really applied to a problem that you can address. I can fix it so that no student is complaining, we're taking fees off, we're anticipating what they need, I'm gonna solve this. And then we have this other thing which is like, I can't solve problems for students like they feel emotionally overwhelmed, they feel lonely, they feel disconnected. I can't just fix a thing there, but what I can do is teach them strategies for how to deal with those different elements. And so I think being able to separate those two things out, there are things that you can solve. Um, and then there are places where you have to say, I'm going to teach strategies for how students are going to better be able to cope. So Alicia from Bethel, do you, do you want to say something about that? No, no, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Alicia from Bethel was saying, I, I wanted to hear Anthony talk about self-care strategies for students and keeping students engaged in community during COVA with all of the social and physical distance in mind, which obviously is really hard for students. And I think that falls under strategy. Yeah. I think the solutions are social distancing, masks, chairs far, further away, um, you know, bigger classrooms. And those are, those are strategies, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, those are solutions. A strategy is, so a solution would be, hey, we have um, a really good, you know, department where you can go and get counseling. Okay. That's a solution. Yeah. Okay. We're here for you, man. You, all you got to do is press that one button and we're here for you. We, we come, we'll bring you a box of donuts, we'll talk, we'll have a beer, whatever you need to do. Great. Yeah. That is a solution. The strategy comes into place where is how do you get that kid to press that button without him knowing he's pressing that button. And how you do that, you just said it. Activities, activities, and activities are more critical now, even for my own kids, are yeah. more critical now than ever. Like me and my wife would not, uh, always see eye to eye, and I'm like, babe, I know COVID's a thing, but the kids are going to the beach, they said they're social separating, nothing I can do about it, it's right down the block. We know yeah. it's not a crowded beach like Miami, they're going to a barbecue to celebrate their friend's birthday, their parents are there, they're, they're saying they're six feet away. Like, so, so I could like keep my kids active. So these things don't bubble up or I can keep them in the house where these things bubble up and they didn't push the button. And they said, daddy's always here. Daddy's always here for you. Right. right? And then in those social settings where maybe I like, before I asked my daughter to, to, to do something for me and I did it on purpose so I can have two minutes with her. Cause I know it's going to be busy all day. I would just wanted to take her temperature or mental temperature and how she's doing. Yeah. So, so the, you cannot expect kids that are gone through or going through COVID going through, am I going to have a job? Is this the right career? All these other problems. And then when they're feeling overwhelmed, not having the resources and understanding that if I push this point, people, people are going to come because they're embarrassed. Right. We just had someone on my show today. To talk, I said, talk about your college education that you didn't get. He was embarrassed his whole life. And now he's the CEO of a major company, but yeah. he was embarrassed about it. So when you're 20, when you have little wins, when you're 50, you can talk about your insecurities. I got look back. I bet it's 50. I can do that now. I right. couldn't do that when I was 25. So don't expect 25 year old kids or 20 year old kids, I should say, to press a button and to ask for help. We've got to keep them active and we have got to be in their face in the best way possible. Absolutely. That's so the difference I love that. the solution. Yeah, I love that taking the temperature, right? Because that's exactly what we're talking about is like, how do we look our students in the eye and say, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with you. I think all parents are doing this. Hey, something is not right today. What is going on? I'm lonely. I got a text from my eight year old the other day and she said, mom, I'm not okay. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm coming home. Like we need to talk about it. Right. But we're all doing that. Like, how do we make sure our students are seen and not depend on their shame 
or I mean, you got, you were talking today about vulnerability, man, it is hard when you're 20 to be vulnerable and to say, I'm not doing okay. This is not going well. I need some help. Right. I was 40 till I could say that. I mean, I, I, I never, I still don't ask for a lot of help, but, but, but in business I do. And, and it's just, it's so, so we can't have these expectations that they're going to be able to figure it out. Yeah. And as you said that one of my daughters just came in. So once I Anthony has a rule about no one's allowed to leave his house without saying goodbye to him. So occasionally when he's on the webinar, he's got to be like, hold on one second. I got to say goodbye to my family. Um, while he's doing that, I want to lay out for you guys four places that I'm anticipating students are going to need help. Um, and so I want to just talk through those four because I want you to have something really practical um, to go back to your team to, to be talking about. Also, if you guys have questions, please let me know. Happy to answer those. The first one, Anthony, exactly to your point, we do not, we just are like-minded because I did not tell you I had this slide next. Before but, we get to that slide, can I tell you what just happened? Yes, please. I'm a problem solver. So I basically paid the tuition way before it was due. My daughter had the need to come in here and show me a text message she just got from school saying tuition wasn't, wasn't paid. Paid yesterday. And it was not due for three weeks. But again, she wants to make sure that it's right because that's who she is. She's like her father. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just funny. But, like, but if I didn't pay it, I'd be sitting here going, oh my God, I didn't pay it. I wouldn't be able to concentrate. <laughs> so I anticipated her getting an email or something. And so, so let me just pay it early. And if there's a problem, there's a problem. But I know it's done. You know? You're sure of it, yeah. It, right, right. So it just it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I'm, doing? I'm, I'm doing the webinar. But. Yeah, I was telling that. I was like, uh, well, Anthony has a rule that his kids aren't allowed to leave. So maybe someone's leaving the house and not, have, yeah. Right. Well, well, no, she she was panicked that dad didn't. Pay <laughs> You're like, I planned. I saw the problem coming. I I took care of it. Yeah, and she wasn't that. worried about going to school. She's just worried about getting out of the house and go back to to, to her friends. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So recreation. This is such a huge place that students, we've got to solve this problem for them. Um, it's so oh, wow, much. I didn't even know you had this, okay. I know, that's what I was saying. We're, we're just simpatico, I guess. So thinking about how do you provide recreation for students? How do you teach them how to do it safely? Thinking about things like esports, which I think is gonna be even bigger than normal in the fall. Um, and doing things like res halls against each other in esports so that you can do that really safely. Outdoor things, so things like disc golf or archery or whatever you have a barbecue, on your campus. A barbecue. Get, have, a barbecue. Have, have, have who makes the best hamburger. Yeah, right. If you have um, natural spaces like the beach or like the forest or like the park, right, being able to say, we have got to do recreation with each other because, Anthony, to your point, Students sitting at home, uh, in a res hall without a roommate, wearing masks to class, coming back to their res hall, getting food delivered to them is not a healthy life. It's a dangerous life. It will, it will depress anyone. It, it, it may get you before COVID gets you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, yeah. and my daughter, who is playing volleyball for Manhattanville, she just got her spring. Um, uh, she, she, she was supposed to play in the fall. Now she's going to play in the spring. And I was literally panicking because she, I knew she was going to be on the phone with the coach and she came and I go, I said to her, um, so, and she goes, it's going to be in the spring. I go, how you feeling? She goes, Hey, lost my senior year, you know, half online, half online. It, it, I, I'm getting used to it. And, 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 and then we talked about it later and like, she has, she's an honor roll student. So she, she's now, she, she has a, a boyfriend that's going to the same school. So, so she has other things to fill that up. Yeah. And, then, and what's good is she's still on a team, so she's still going to be expected to go work out, be in condition, and That's be ready. So, so, so I'm like, okay. So I took that and said, okay, she's disappointed, but she got it. Yeah, right? for sure. She got it. Like, she's, she's figured it out in her head. She's learning how to figure this out in her head. And I'm still yeah. watching her, but it's um, – I, I cried. I went in my room and cried. <laughs> I did. I said, this poor kid, man. What else? Like, it's not fair. It's, it is hard when your kids are like, I mean, it's kind of the school of hard knocks these days. You know, what else? I never say, I never say it's not fair in my life ever. When it comes to my kids and I'm like, Oh my God, it's not fair. To, but for me, I've never said it. Matter of fact, it, I'm allergic to that word. It's not right. fair. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, I think just, just, but anticipating how you can do it safely and what sports like bowling, start a bowling team, you know, on bowling team, you can do that safely. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I just was, um, Matt was telling me the other day that they have like 
UV uh, scanners that you can get to like clean the balls. So that's yeah, helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Your luggage, whatever. And even like bocce or like, you know, it's an Italian bowling and yeah. where I grew up on it. There's many, the reason a lot of stuff doesn't happen is because it hasn't happened before. And a lot of times, and I'll, I'll be the first one to admit it, I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I don't like right now I'm supposed to do something for Thursday. If I do it tomorrow, we'll probably have a better result. So I'm going to do it tomorrow. I don't want to do it to Thursday, but I'm going to do it tomorrow because uh, I know if I do thank it. You. Thank you. That is, so you just said two genius things that I would like to repeat so that everybody got them. The first one is a lot of times we don't do things because it hasn't been done before, which is not a good excuse, right? right. Everything's different now. So do something different. Um, in fact, I was thinking about the hotel where you outsourced your room service. Mm -hmm which had never been done before. Like, hey, diner on the corner, we will send our room service stuff to you. You have to deliver it in a tie. And it worked out great. Right. That had not been done before. And it was great. And my first guest was um, uh, Coretta Scott King. Really? Yep. That's amazing. That was, oh. I, was like, ha, 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 ha. I can't even imagine. Like, I, I'll be cool. Be cool. <laughs> right? I, I was like, well, because they delivered it. Then I just thought and said, is everything okay? And it was Credit Scott King. And I was just like, how was your hamburger? It was delicious. <laughs> I was like, okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> so just because we haven't done it before does not mean we shouldn't do it now. And also... We are, I mean, I feel lazy these days. I feel lazy. I'm just like the list of things that I could be doing is so long and it is hard to motivate myself to do everything I need to. But I think if you put it in the context of anticipation and solving problems will save you in the long run. Right, but, but also would you choose that to interrupt you? I'm sorry. No, no. Finish that thought. I'm sorry. Well, I, I think if you if you talk about it in terms of an investment, it's easier for me to motivate myself to say, hey, this is an investment and it's gonna pay out dividends in the long run if I can just bear down and get it done right now. Exactly. And and, and not only that, then take two or three things off your list. I'll give you an example. Um, well, to, to get back to what you said, it's like, do you notice on my LinkedIn show that I do every day, uh, you know how I sign off, how I used to sign off, thanks for checking in. Yeah. How do I sign in right now? I don't Be know. kind to yourself. Oh, thank so, you. So, so, the, what I say is I say, I look at the camera and I go, be kind to yourself. So anticipating and getting that done, you got to get it done because you know that's going to pay dividends. But then take something off your list. Yeah. Okay. Don't maybe go to the supermarket. Maybe don't work out today, whatever. But, but you got to, you got to manage yourself. Right. Yeah. So, so I do that. Like the other day I, I, I had one of those not days, but I wasn't having a not day. Like Carson Daly's mom became a friend of mine. She's just recently passed away. And she, one day I called her up for something. She stayed in my hotels. And uh, she, I, like two days later, or whatever I say, Hey Patty, where were you? She goes, I had a not day. Like what's a not day? She goes, I not do anything. <laughs> and, 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 and so, so some days you need a not day and, yeah. and that's okay. I can't really have them right now because everybody's home and so much going on. But what I did was I said, we're going to have for lunch. I have an hour. When am I going to have for lunch? I, I'm like this intolerant. So I was like, I'm going to have ice cream because I'm going to go to this vegan place 20 minutes from my house. I'm going to go have ice cream. So I literally had an ice cream cone for lunch and I stood in my car or sat in my car and had an ice cream cone, like a five-year-old yeah. <laughs> dripping down my throat, listening to a podcast and got home and finished my day. I had ice cream. Yeah. Mom, Did you have lunch? I go, I had ice cream. <laughs> hey, and that's such a good point about as you're anticipating what your students need, it doesn't have to be gigantic. I mean, maybe it is just ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> maybe that's going to sell. I, I, I'm telling you, if somebody said, hey, Anthony, we need you to do something. It's a business opportunity you're going to make X amount of dollars from. I'm like, I need ice cream, bro. <laughs> because I, I haven't had ice cream in 15 years because of, I, I, I'm allergic to it. So, so this vegan place opened up and I love this ice cream. I'm like, I've been like that having ice cream 15 years. Yeah. Ice cream. And so that is what I mean. Be kind to yourself. Doesn't mean you're not relentless. Doesn't mean you're not a planner. Doesn't mean you're not a problem solver. Doesn't mean you don't get up and I'm an A-type personality. You're an A-type personality. That doesn't mean that. But when you got to flip that switch off, man, and just go get ice cream or just yeah. say, I'm having a not day, even if you're going to get in a little bit of trouble. Because what's better, getting a little bit of trouble with your supervisor or getting a little bit of trouble with yourself? That's and getting right. a little bit of trouble with yourself is a lot more dangerous than getting a little trouble with your supervisor. 
And getting in trouble with yourself is a debt that keeps growing, right? You you have to fix that problem or it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Did we ever talk about the movie in your head, the 20 second movie? No. Okay. Everybody, had, we talk to ourselves more than we talk to anybody else, right? We mm -hmm. have, we have, my movie's 20 seconds because I'm impatient. So everybody has a movie in their head <laughs> that they listen to, right? I can do it, I can do it, man. I'm good at this, I'm a good manager, I can do this. I'm gonna take this on, this challenge. I got this, no worry, that's my movie, right? Yeah. Or my movie is, I suck, I got left back, you know, I got a bad SAT, you know, I lost my hair when I was a kid, I didn't have a father, whatever, that's a movie too. Yeah. Which movie are you gonna play, right? right? For too long, that movie broke on the reel because I just played that bad movie too long in my head. And then one day after I, I got a couple of wins in my life, I got a couple, a little bit of confidence in my life, I said, let me, what happens if I change that movie? I do a little bit more, I go a lot further. A, a colonel said that to me, go do a little more, go a lot further. It's working. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to beat the crap out of my competition and I don't got to do much more because they're lazy and I'm not. <laughs> so that movie in your head is much more important to you than getting a little trouble with your supervisor and then explaining, say, Hey, I know I'm supposed to get that done, but I got something I got to deal with. They don't know what you got to deal with. It could be just going to get an ice cream. Yeah. And, and talk about coping strategies for students to be able to have that conversation with them. Hey guys, we're in a place where everybody is struggling with what's happening in their brain. You have choices that you can make. Here's how we're going to talk about it. What's playing in your head all the time. And, and can you change that? And I think what's important and you touched on it before is yes, activities are important and, and, and touchstones and all this stuff is important, but it has to be a constant. Right now, it has to be a constant. It's like, we got to keep ourselves and our kids and everybody, like we usually say, hey, we have to think, we have to read a book, we have to sit, we have to, we have to, we have to veg, uh, and people are moving too fast. Yeah. I'm saying right now, we're done kind of sitting and thinking. We need to be moving. Yeah. And so, so we need to get off our iPhones. And I got this bad habit. You want to hear my bad habit? I got a bad habit. I don't go to sleep till very late at night. Okay. So two o'clock in the morning, I jump in bed and I'm on TikTok for like an hour. <laughs> I'm like, what the? So there's this one lady, this older woman that comes on for my TikTok feed. She goes, it's two o'clock in the morning. Put TikTok away. <laughs> go to bed. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> but, so, so, but you know what? My brain needs it apparently. Like it's just this mindless thing. I appreciate and, and, and that. Now what's, the, what, what's the deal with these study time, play time? Right. What's this, what's this thing with like now middle-aged people going on TikTok and saying, I'm allowed to go on TikTok. That's weird. I don't know. I don't understand. TikTok scares me a little bit. I, yeah, it scares me too. <laughs> but, but, but I, you're, I, 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 there's, there's this dance couple I watch a lot and I like, um, I like the, the way they dance and whatever. But um, yeah, so that's my habit. I have to break it. I'm going to break it tonight. Okay. Well, I'm going to hold you to it. I'll, no, you know I'll why? text you at two and be like, get off TikTok. <laughs> you know why I said I'm going to break it? Because they said I'm going to break it. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a person. I get mad at myself. Like, I don't play. Like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Done. <laughs> well, listen, I want to talk to you about this sign because I think something else students need. So we have um, discipline and academics. We enforce this in our students in a lot of different ways. If they're athletes, we have requirements for them to, in order to be able to play. If they're freshmen, we teach them. These are your academic disciplines, right? Study skills. If you have students that are transferring no credit hours, you might have them in a study class, um, first generation students. You just have a bunch of different students who when they first come to school, they don't know how to study and we apply this academic discipline. And a lot of those things are gonna be broken so you're pulling in students who need to learn those skills, need to have external discipline applied to them, but we don't have a great way to provide that to them. So this sign is funny because when I was in grad school, I had a very good friend who was super studious and she and I would go study together, but I wanted to play all the time. Like I wanted to tell her stories and I had something. And so she made this sign on the back of a menu that says study time, play time. And it would, it would sit on study time and I'd be like, hey, I want to tell you something. And she'd be like, and she would flip it to play time and let me tell my story. And then she'd be like, flip it back and be like, this is the time that we're studying. So she gave me great external discipline. Um, we are not giving that to our students in the fall unless we are very intentional because athletics is likely going to be postponed to the spring like like to your daughters so. yeah, and, 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 that, and that's exactly right intentional right we have to be intentional with ourselves with our kids with, with play time and i love what she did there because she knew your personality and she's like we don't want to kill 
her because if you don't give her her play time, it's like when I go on my tangents and you let me go, I know you say, I know we're in the time or whatever, but you let me go and play a little bit on my little tangent and tell a story that you like may, may not know makes sense, but you let me come back to it. So, and I read your, I read your mind and I re read your eyes. And I'm like, okay, I gotta come back because I went too far. <laughs> so, so, but that's what she was doing for you. That's right. She was like, Hey, I'm going to give you a play time, but I'm just letting you know. This is playtime. Now we're back. Yeah. Right. Here now we go. We're back. <laughs> now we're back. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I have another resource that I want to talk about, and that is just that students are going to have to get um, used to the new normal. This is, I'm very worried about this. I anticipate this being a really big problem because March was exciting. Although it was bad and everyone had to go home, it was novel, it was new, it was exciting. The summer was the summer. It was lonely and we had to stay apart from each other, but it wasn't like, okay, we're, we should be back at school. So they had this exciting thing that happened that was difficult. They've had kind of a lonely summer. And if you have students come back, the school that they come back to is not gonna be the same one that they left. It's gonna be different. And if you have freshmen coming, it is going to be different than what they were promised when they decided to go to your school. It just has to be in order for us to be safe. And so a big piece here is just controlling the narrative and saying, hey, students, when you come back, we're like in the long haul and this is not fun anymore. And we're going to be doing things differently. It's okay to feel that way. Here are some um, ways for you to kind of control what's happening in your, in your mind. Do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think, well, there's two things, right? There are things where you can give kids a break and there's play, or, or students a break and where you can't. And I think the, the campuses that give them a break with masks and social distancing are going to have a problem. Uh, they're going to have a problem with, with, with parents. They're going to have, I know they have a problem with me because if I went on my kid's campus and I didn't see people with masks, I want my money back. I'm taking my kid out. Because um, now I'm, I'm trusting everyone that they're going to do the right thing. So, so you have to be intentional, right? So I think that there's things you can give people a break for and there's things you can't. So that's gotta be very intentional. Those taking, whether it's requiring a test, whether it be requiring a mask, whether it be, whatever it is. We didn't stop down sports and we didn't uh, do half online and half offline and we didn't change our classrooms. And then we're sit standing next to each other on a corner of the school, two feet from each other without a mask on. Then wh what are we doing? Right. We just wasted all of our time and energy and our stress. So what are we doing? So you got to be really, really intentional. And but I think one of the things we do poorly as as communicators, uh, as humans, is we don't say the why, right? So 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 the why is this is important. But then you can go have fun. Then you can go kind of right. listen. You can go play volleyball. We understand that you're not going to be, you know, a hundred feet away. Okay, but if we're going to require a mask, please wear a mask. And if we're not going to require a mask, then it's only maybe two person volleyball, three person, whatever the rules are, just right. give them the why. Because they want to stay together and they want to be health and, uh, healthy and safe. It's just you have to explain to them the way that we stay here this entire year is you have to follow the rules and these are what they are. Listen, listen I'm still a speed demon. I still like uh, getting on racetracks and driving fast and going not, not on the street. But and, on, uh, and skiing down hills really fast, but not as fast as I used to, right? Because when I was 20, I didn't think it was possible for me to break a bone, so I fell off a ladder. So right. listen, 20 year olds, like everybody's been saying, like if you look at Miami Beach and everybody else, it's like they, they think it can't happen to them. And then we push this narrative that young people don't get sick. Right. Oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. Because because what we did was we said you are invincible. Right. You were right. You can't get sick. Yeah. That's right. That's right. right. Um, so we have my tool number three for our schools is that we actually are working with one of my dear, dear friends, Dr. Faith Drew, who is going to be doing videos for your students to talk about motivation and time management and controlling what's going on in your brain, how to be resourceful, how to stand up for yourself. That will be a really helpful tool. The last thing that I want. Can I have those for my kids? So I can send them to yes, you? Yes, for sure. Please, please. Yeah, I will send them to you. And um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of anticipating needs is um, you had a guest yesterday. I forgot her name. She was delightful um, and everyone oh, loved her. Oh, Kimberly. Everyone loved her. She was oh, wonderful. Oh, One of the things she said, though, that I really loved was, so she was talking about people coming to a hotel and she was like, what I don't want people to remember about 2020 was masks and quarantine. I want to create memorable experiences when people are in my hotel and I want that to be the 2020 memory for them, which I love. Yeah, and, 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 you know, when 
she said that, it really hit me. And kind of in the show that we do every day, 12 o'clock on time, almost every day or five days a week, noon, we're having, you know, um, all the CEOs, we're having everybody in the hospitality, travel and food and beverage industry on. And what I love about that is that's what I hope people remember. I hope that they'll remember why we had to do it. I want them to remember that we did it. Yeah. Right. I don't want them to remember we're doing it because we're not traveling. Just, oh my God, that was a great guest on Anthony's show. That was a great guest on the Glenn show. That was a, it was a great guest. It wasn't why, the why. So that's a really good point. When she, you, you, listen, we said that this was like the Kim show. Like I fell in love with her and I was just like, oh my God, this like, the, because, because there's two things that happen there. Just if I can dive. Yeah. Uh, uh, two, sec two, two things. One, she's an incredibly transparent and thoughtful human. Mm -hmm. And she happens to be a female CEO in the hospitality industry. Those are rare. Yeah. And so she was, not only was she, uh, a female executive, which was intriguing because there's not a lot of them, but she was a rock star and probably the best CEO, like, like women or man's like, I think she's the best friggin' CEO of a management company I've ever seen in my life. And so, so yeah, it, she was very inspiring to me as well. And, and again, she made me feel something. She made me remember why I do this show, not because I have to, it's because it's just an interesting show to do. And yeah. if, if, so in a hotel, if you're telling them wear a mask in the hallway and everything and everything's the same, the carpet makes the same, and you're not doing fun things, like just little things, right. you know, unexpected detail. Right. I love that. So I was thinking about that for our students. We don't want their memory of the fall experience to be like, I had to wear a mask and it was terrible. We want to think of fun things like put together a bingo tournament. How much fun would that be? It's like so old school. You could do it, you know, safely distanced. Um, Esports tournaments, think about little things that will give them that marker in their mind about a memory that they can have apart from all the junk. You, you, know, know, if, if, you know, if I was president right now of a school, what's the first thing that would jump in my mind and it just jumped in my mind? Um, everybody's wearing a mask. So the safety of my students, because you don't know who that person is that's wearing a mask. If somebody wore a mask walking down the street six months ago, you walk on the other side. Right. If somebody walks into a store, you walk out. Right. Okay. Mask is danger. Yeah. So now mask is safety. My brain is messed up. <laughs> you got to rewire that, right? No, like, no, but I'm saying you. Okay. Yeah. If you're a young lady or young man walking down the street two o'clock in the morning. There's just another fellow student with a mask on, but you don't know that fellow student. Yeah. That's and, and and so so from a from a from that standpoint, I would have to figure out. Okay, how do we? What do we do here? Maybe yeah. we like everybody's supposed to be on campus. Maybe that day they have a blue sticker on there. Well, I don't know. I don't know what they're what, what they would do. I would hate to do that, but but there's 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 that too. Yeah, safety for sure. Anyway. Um, okay. Well, I have three more tools that I want to tell you about. The first one is we're doing a Ferris client survey. So we have been working really hard for our clients. I would love to hear about how we're doing. We want to make sure that we're spending our time well and that that we're creating um, things that are helpful to you. So please go and fill that out. Also, we have a partner webinar tomorrow, no, Thursday. It's about um, a drive to retention in the fall. And then Anthony, you and I have a webinar in a couple of weeks. I think it is on, yeah, August 11th. Hold on, let me make sure it's on my calendar. <laughs> Go ahead. If Anthony confirms, we have a, we have a webinar. No, I'm probably confirmed. If you said we have it, it's it, yeah, it's on the three o'clock. Okay. So we're talking about finding um, your most at risk population. How we're going to uncover those uh, students? Really similar, actually, to your point, right? How do we? They're 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 covered, and also they're separated from us. And so, how are we going to invest in that? Yeah, I, and that, I, and that's going to be a little mind reading, but you're going to have to go to mind reading school. Yeah. Right. I think it's like, depending on your expertise, right? Like you just have to, to develop a sense about how to do that. Well, I think there's questions we can come up with that can give people a tool to not feel like we're intrusive. And yeah. they'll, we're asking this question and they're thinking we want this answer, but by giving us this answer, we got that answer. You right, that's saying? exactly right. Yep, I love that. Um, so I think the summary of our time together, I was thinking about a lighthouse, which, you know, Ferris is the first lighthouse uh, in the world. What's that? Um, Ferris, our company name, was the first lighthouse in the world in Alexandria. It was one of the seven wonders of the world. 
And I was thinking about this idea of anticipation, how we anticipate there's going to be a problem here. And a lighthouse is a great example of that, right? Somebody was like, I anticipate that a ship that's coming is going to run into this ground. And so we better put some strategies and solutions to make sure that we're keeping our students safe and healthy. And I think you've done a great job of, of the balance of physically healthy, keep your mask on, understand the rules, have a plan, and mentally healthy. We have to be doing things together and having fun and looking at each other in the eyes and checking on each other and taking care of each other and ourselves as well. Do you, do you have a, another summary of that or was that a good, was that a good sum up? Listen, you you summed you summed everything up. I just I just use words, but you're you're making sense. So no, I think I think I think that that's it. Listen, I think the word that you said was um, that you have to be you, you have to have intent. I, I forgot the word you used exactly. Intentional, but, yeah. Right, and, and and that is really important, right? Yeah. It is really critical that this is what I got to do. This is what I'm gonna do. But then filter out the stuff that you don't want to do because we can only handle so much, man. Yeah. And, and we got a hundred percent bandwidth. And so we got the COVID, the mask, the social distancing. A lot of people aren't making as much money. So we got all that. So that filled up about 80% of our bandwidth. Okay. Right. Yeah, right? So that we, now, now for the stuff that's the regular stuff, we only got 20% of, of, of the bandwidth left. Yeah. So, so let's take that 20% of the bandwidth and let's just push out all the unnecessary stuff and just work on the 20% that's necessary. That's necessary and important. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, friends, always good to spend time with you. Um, and I will keep collecting questions for our time together next time. Thanks to everybody who attended. Um, we are always really pleased to be able to serve you. And please let us know if there's anything else we can do to be helpful. Have a great day. Thank you.